Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the history of the Smashing Pumpkins guitar tone and recording process for their album Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Billy's main guitar for recording the album was a reissue 1957 Stratocaster nicknamed the Bat Strat. This is the same one he used to record the Siamese Dream album. He also relied heavily on his 1970s I Love My Mom Strat as seen in the Melancholy 666 demo tapes. This guitar was later painted blue and remains in Billy's rotation till this day. Both of these guitars were equipped with lace sensor pickups, blue in the neck position, silver in the middle, and red in the bridge. This gave the strats a fatter sound while retaining the cut and bite in the top end. The other Pumpkins guitarist, James Eha, mainly used his Gibson Les Paul Custom, along with a silver burst version, a Gibson Flying V, and a Gibson SG. So the main sound of the album was a combination of Billy's Strat and James's Les Paul. Although Billy said they used about 20 different electric guitars and 10 different acoustics on the album for all the needed overdubs and tracking to give extra character to the sounds. The bassist Darcy used the combination of the Fender Jazz Bass and the Fender Precision Bass to record her parts. For the amps and cabinets, Billy basically took his live rig from the Siamese Dream Tour and brought it into the studio. This consisted of a massive rack setup which included multiple preamps and effects powered with a power amp. So this consisted of three preamps, the Marshall JMP-1, a Mesa Boogie Tri-Axis, and the ADA MP-1. Billy said, I really like the JMP-1 for that evil Black Sabbath sound. Most of the classic Marshall sound begins with the Overdrive 1 setting, and we use the bass boost to fatten it up. Now all of the preamps were powered with a Mesa Boogie Strategy 500, which helped give them a deeper and fat tone. Some of the other effects he had in his rack setup were the Alasis 3630 compressor, which he ran in front of the JMP to drive more gain and bite into the tone. He also had a Digitech DHP55 effects processor and an Eventide H3000, which is mainly used for the dreamy sounds heard on Porcelina and Through the Eyes of Ruby. This was all controlled with a flash switching system that would allow him to set up certain patches that he could switch to at any point of the given song with the MIDI controller. In reference to the tone of the album, Billy said, The basic sound on the album comes from the amp rig running into the Marshall preamp with the Mesa Boogie power amp. You just have to take the time to tweak it and get the right amount of gain in combination with the specific guitar you're using. I think most people do a very poor job of that. They get something that sounds like it's really exciting and distorted, but when you really listen back to it, it's just not that good. It was also noted that they still use their 1984 JCM 800 soul head with the KT-88 tubes in it from Siamese Dream on a few tracks as needed. As for cabinets, they stuck with the same Marshall 1960 A cab which was used on the Siamese Dream album. This cabinet was used for about 90% of Melancholy and was equipped with the Celestion T75 speakers. This was mic'd with the Shure SM57 and the AKG C414. Another main part of the Melancholy sound was created from the production team of Flood and Alan Mulder who brought decades of experience to the project. Also, the fact that they recorded exclusively to tape instead of now the modern digital played a huge element in the sound of the album. Roughly two-thirds of Melancholy was tracked in the Pumpkins recording space on the Otari MTR-90 Mark II, and the remaining portion was tracked at Chicago Recording Company on the Studer A820. Flood says of the tape machines, I love recording on tape because it just adds a whole different dimension to the sound. The way the tape changes and modifies the sound is so musical, particularly on the bottom end. This was very much a conscious decision and very much a part of the album's sound. Although they recorded to tape, the digital program Pro Tools was just becoming available to studios. The combination of analog and digital opened up a world of recording possibilities and played to the creative strengths of Melancholy's adventurous spirit. 
in a track like Through the Eyes of Ruby, which contained approximately 70 guitar tracks, which would have been impossible to do on tape alone. Likewise, Porcelina of the Vast Oceans contained roughly six sections that were all recorded at different times with different instruments and microphone configurations and then fused together with the benefit of Pro Tools. In preparation for recording the album, Flood made the decision to record the band live in the room as much as possible rather than having each member separately record their parts. Flood felt like the band he would see live wasn't really being captured on the record, so a lot of the melancholy of the album was tracked by the band at deafening volumes. Billy said of the process, there is so much sound in the room that it was physically uncomfortable. Your ears, your emotional resistance, everything would wear down, but that gave an angst and energy to the tracks that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. So after Flood got all the main live tracks recorded, they would then determine which parts needed to be overdubbed and re-recorded. Flood would generally work with Corgan in one room recording vocals and extra guitars, and Alan Mulder worked with James and Darcy in another room for lead guitar tones and bass tracks. This process allowed them to work much faster as Corgan was able to delegate more of the recording to other members, unlike the Siamese Dream album where he recorded 90% of the material himself. The 666 tapes give a good insight into this pre-production process. Flood's presence in the studio also saw an improvement in Corrigan's vocal takes. They employed the Shure SM7B on most tracks, and Billy sang in the control room with the speakers playing. Flood found that Corrigan's pitch and timing were considerably better this way rather than the typical way of using headphones in an isolation booth. Billy also stated that he purposely sings three to seven cents sharp to give his voice extra character and help create a chorusing effect with the guitar tones. Once the recording of vocals was finished, Flood and Corgan carried out rigorous evaluation of all the takes. They were assessed on the basis of rhythmic accuracy, melodic power, and delivery. The best of these takes were then picked out and edited together into one final composite. Experimentation with new sounds was a tenant of the melancholy era. They began experimenting with unprecedented diversity in instrumentations other than guitar and bass. There is the piano and mellotron in the opening title track, a live orchestra for Tonight Tonight, a pedal lap steel guitar was used in In the Arms of Sleep and Take Me Down, salt shakers and scissors were also used in Cupid Deloc, Ebo parts in many tracks, and many other parts added in throughout the album for extra flavor. The band also embraced electronic samples for the first time, making use of Pro Tools synths, drum loops, and even orchestral arrangements to supplement the songs. One of their biggest singles, 1979, makes use of these electronic elements to expert effect. Okay, so there you have a good rundown of all the different recording elements and production parts of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.